Hey, how's it going everybody? Victor here. So in the last video we went over the uh, registration process of two 7940 Cisco phones and we also managed to register a SIP phone, the, more specifically the x -Lite phone. <clears throat> so for this video we're not going to be doing any configuration. Uh, well, I'll be showing you some of the commands on the CLI, but that'll be it. And so this is what we're going to be focusing on. Um, if you remember on the last video, we kind of mentioned these two different configs, the operating config and the settings config. And well, it is important to know the difference between the two because that will allow you to better troubleshoot some of the issues that you might encounter when you're trying to register phones, which um, at the beginning, that's where you'll be having most of the problems. Um, <clears throat> so the settings config is an XML file. And uh, most of the times it's going to be located in the TFTP server. You could also have it in the flash of the router. But uh, most of the cases you're going to have it, or at least it's uh, easier to have it just in your TFTP server so you don't overwhelm your uh, router's flash. So uh, I have all my XML files in my TFTP server, which is TFTP root. And so pretty much you're going to have one for each model of phones or each series. And so uh, they primarily hold the language of the phones, the firmware versions, the call processing, server IP, and port numbers. And well, these files or these configs are sent across the network using TFTP. So on the other hand, we have the, we have the operating configs. And they primarily hold the directory numbers, the line numbers, the ringtones, and the on-screen buttons of the phones, and is sent across the network using SCCP or SIP. So, as you may or may not remember, SCCP and SIP they are two um, signaling protocols. So, just like uh, for plain old telephone systems, the um, SS7 signaling protocol. SCCP and SIP are two signaling protocols. They allow for communication between phones and CME or the call manager express. So imagine a user here, this phone picks it up and then um, say this is extension 101. He's trying to reach extension 102 over this, over this side. And so he picks up the phone, dials the first number, which is the first digit, which is one. That digit is sent to the CME for it to be processed. So each digit this user is pressing, the router is going to process it and is going to do it based on dial periods, which is something that we're going to be talking about in a little bit. So after the after all the digits are dialed, the router processes the number and forwards the call. So all that communication between the phones and the CME router is happening um, thanks to SCCP or SEP. So after that happens, after the router forwards the call to the destination, uh, basically the CME router steps out and enters the RTP or the real-time transmission protocol. And so that communication with RTP is going to happen between the two phones. So as it says right here, the CME steps out and the RTP is the one that handles the actual audio stream between the two phones. So that's pretty much how that works. Now next we have different ways to connect to multiple devices. So like for instance, if you want to connect to an old, uh, an old station or an old phone, you what you would use is an ex a foreign exchange station port <clears throat> or FXS. So basically you would configure it using a signaling, a call progress tone and a call ID information. Or, it, for instance, you want to connect to an old PBX or maybe um, a line coming from the PSDN, uh, you would use an FXO port. And these two ports are basically modules that you insert in your router. And the connectors, they are, they are RJ11 connectors. So, like, let me just bring up my router. And... So I have a, you can do a do show voice port summary and that will show you the different <clears throat> voice interfaces that you have installed. So like I have a FXO module which has two 
um, RJ11 connectors and they are in phases 000 and 001. So if I actually have here and go to voice dashboard, it's 000. That'll put me in the configuration mode for this particular interface. So uh, say I want to connect this to a um, PSTN network or the telephone system. So you need to set up signaling and then a dial type, uh, a caller ID, and the ring number. And the signaling and the dial type, that's gonna match your uh, your providers or your telephone service provider. And so, yes, that's about it for the FXS and FXO ports. Um, now, the other option will be to have a T1 or E1 card or a one interface card. And you could configure this both for data and voice. Now the configuration differs a little whether you're configuring as a, the kind of signaling that you want to have. You want to have a CAS signaling or a CCS signaling and pretty much that's going to depend on your service provider again. So like for instance we want to configure a CAS, you need to set the framing which, get a which at the same time get a match the one on the service provider as well as the line code and then the clock source line or internal and pretty much the difference is that if you specify a line that means the clock you're gonna get it from your service provider now if you say internal <clears throat> you're you're gonna be generating the clock yourself so then comes the DS0 groups uh, which also is known as the pry groups in CCS and this will be the different slot channels that you have for or different time slots that you have for your uh, one interface. So, so if for instance you're gonna you're having a uh, T1 line, you're gonna have uh, 23 or 24 channels to configure. So you could set up groups, uh, which for example you could have uh, group number one, and that could be the time slots um, zero through or I'm sorry one through 20 and then a different group and have the other four time slots in the different group, that kind of stuff. Um, so as well as the CCS signaling, uh, it's pretty much the same thing. The, the first thing you need to set is the switch type, which again, that's need, that needs to match the service provider. And then from there, you need to say this, um, this sprite group will be the same equivalent to the DS0 group. So uh, that's, how, oh, and so like right after you set this command, the DS0 group, the router is going to create these different interfaces. So uh, for instance, say the 1 slash 0 is going to be the voice port. So that's the physical port. And then number 1, that's going to be the group or the DS0 group that you specify. So if you want to configure the, say, five channels that are under the in group one then you go to this interface and do your configuration from there so let me see what we have here okay so for instance if I, if you have a t1 line and you want to connect uh channels or time slots one through five to the pvx system and then channel six through 24 to the pstn what you would do is that you set two different DS0 groups and uh, of course you would do different configurations on each group so that's how you go and do that alright so next we have the dial peers alright so dial peers well <clears throat> dial peers is basically a way to uh, recognize what's the number, what's the, where's the station that I'm calling to. So it's basically giving a, or identifying each end device that you have connected. So for instance, let me just uh, when we'll go. Well, we are already at the port level. So say we are configuring this interface right here, 
and instead of an FXO, which is the one that I have, we would have we have uh, an FXS, uh, and we have an old phone connected to that port. So what we would do is that we would say a dial peer, or I can see right here, we would say a dial peer, and it's gonna be voice dial peer. We're gonna give it an a tag which can be any name. Uh, the recommendation is that you give this tag um, tag value the same value as the extension number just to uh, kind of makes make things easier to remember so if we have an extension one uh, 1101 we would say the tag is 1101 and it's gonna be a plain old telephone system in this case alright so and then we will say destination pattern Oops. okay and then the number so it will be 1101 and the port we need to say what's the port that is connecting to this phone so it's the only one of the the, the couple that I have which is 0/0, zero slash zero. and port voice interface slot port zero. Oh, slash zero right okay so that's uh, pretty much it when it comes to dial peers for um, FXS ports. So if we look at the on the other side, uh, on router B. So in this case, instead of having a uh, foreign exchange port, what we have is a um, P1 or E1 line. So and that's connecting to a PBX which has many extensions. So what we would do is that we would set a dial peer. Uh, again, we could set any tag. It's gonna be a plain old telephone system. And then the destination pattern, uh, we're gonna use the. Uh, it's kind of like a what a wild card. So uh, and this we're gonna be explaining a little bit what plus uh, dot plus and t what all that what all that stuff. But um, what you need to remember right now is that if you had two dot 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 means any numbers that come after two I'm going to be forwarding them out this interface. So these are extensions say 2001, 2002, 2003 as long as a user on this side dials a number two now that's going to go towards this interface or towards this side of the network. Um, so as you can see the port 1 slash 0 which is the physical interface and then 23 will be the group or the DS0 group um, so next we have the uh, voice over IP dial peer to connect the two routers so in this case uh, it's pretty straightforward uh, dial peer voice again and again and uh, whatever tag you want then it's not a plain old telephone system it's a voice over IP dial peer so you need to make sure to uh, have this keyword voice over IP and then the destination pattern again is gonna be um, well in this case if you're configuring on this on C on the router A pers uh, perspective is gonna be two dot 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 now for the router B would be one dot 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 and then the session target will be the corresponding IP of the neighbor and you need to set a codec so that's pretty much how that's done let me just see if we can exit out of here we're gonna say dial peer we're gonna say we're gonna be voice and again whatever tag voice over IP the destination pattern um, it could be one dot 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 and then the session target it's going to be IP before and then the IP says 10.10.10.1 .10 .10 and then you have different codecs that you can set so that's be pretty much how that's going to work um, there's a lot more to talk about dial peers. Uh, we also can do digit manipulation, but uh, we'll talk about that later. So, 
Next we have the private line automatic ring down or PLAR. And there's a very classic example when it comes to PLAR, uh, and it is the um, elevator phone. So, <clears throat> for instance, uh, well, I don't have my paint, uh, but like if you have a phone in a, in an elevator, uh, most in most of the cases that's gonna be a PLAR system. When as soon as the user picks up the phone, the f the call is forwarded to another extension. So let me uh, see if I can. We say voice port and it's zero 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 and say connection pilar. Okay. And, and we say connection pilar and say the extension. Say if we're calling from fifteen hundred and we want the user who picks up his phone to get connected to fifteen zero zero one as soon as he picks up the phone. Then we will say pillar uh, connection pillar 15001 or 1501. Yes. Um, so that's uh, pretty straightforward. Now um, let me see. Okay. So if instead of having a uh, end device connected, uh, say you are um, like this apology right here. Say you have a router and then you have two FXOs connected to the PSDN, so you're receiving regular phone calls from these two interfaces to this phone right here. So what you need to do is that you need to go under these two different interfaces and set a connection pillar. So any f call that is coming on this interface is gonna be is gonna con is gonna be connected to this phone right here or the extension 1500. And the same for this other phone, right? As well. Uh, so now that only happens if you ha if you have an FXO port uh, for connecting to the PSTN. If instead of that you have a T1 or E1 connection, you don't need the pillar because the um, well, pretty much the because it's a digital connection going out to the PSTN, the calls are gonna be coming already with the uh, the DID. Or it's not the DID, but that's what the that's what the router is going to use in order to know to what phone to forward the call. So that's pretty much how that's going to work. Um, so I'm going to leave it. I'm going to leave it to this point for now, and because I don't want to go any deep into dial periods right now. Uh, but for the next video, I think we're going to be looking at the um, the dial peers or how to set them up and some of the digit manipulation and then I guess from there we'll just set up the CUCM server and at the well ultimately we'll, we're gonna integrate the CUC or the Unity connection to the CUCM um, set up some mailboxes and I guess that's as far as I'll take this series of boys because well I wouldn't call it a series but just a few videos um, so that's gonna be it for now I hope this will be informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing